Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Drobo Broadcast Network. My name is Mario Blandini at Drobo. Today's topic is optimizing your small and medium business backup strategy using media server-based deduplication and a great solution from Symantec, uh, specifically Backup Exec 2010 and the deduplication suite. Joining me as a guest expert from Symantec, Aiden Finley, and uh, he's a senior product manager at Symantec. How are you doing this morning, Aiden? I'm doing well, Mario. Thank you very much for having me. Fantastic. The topic we have for everybody is crushing data with deduplication without crushing your SMB budget, because a lot of folks often associate deduplication with being expensive. But it's not just for SMBs, is it, Aiden? Uh, no. Uh, de deduplication is coming to everyone here. But it already has, in fact, Exec 2010. Uh, it's from the enterprise down to the SMB, so we've got a deduplication solution for everyone. All right, getting into the meat of the topic, Aiden, we're doing a session here about deduplication because it's primarily been an enterprise class technology, but SMBs certainly want to minimize their backup windows and reduce storage costs in a disk to disk type of backup strategy. And uh, for those who uh, are doing it, cost and complexity is prevented from really doing it across most of their data. And we're here to look at how to deduplicate for SMBs. Give us a background uh, on yourself and how Symantec has been serving the small and medium business market with backup exec and deduplication. Oh, certainly. So I've been uh, an employee of Symantec or Symantec in its various forms for about 15 years now. I've been a product manager specialized in data protection for the last seven. And one of my areas of expertise amongst the, the Symantec team here is deduplication. Deduplication technology originally appeared in our peer disk product some five or six years ago and has since made its way into our net backup product as well as our backup exec product with backup exec 2010. So BE 2010 was our first release of SMB focused data deduplication solution, specifically in software. So we want to avoid the uh, relatively high cost of some of the pure hardware solutions that you might see out there in the market. So with Drobo and with Symantec, we can have a, a real cost effective solution today. When you're optimizing a backup strategy as a small and medium business, uh, you'd probably agree Aiden, that you want to define the right strategy. And we at Drobo certainly feel you have to start with reliable primary storage. If you don't have your data RAID protected across multiple disks, you're, you're not in good shape if your single hard drive would fail. So certainly you want to have data protection that starts with some reliable hardware. But from a backup software strategy, what should SMBs be thinking about when they're trying to find the right backup product for themselves? Uh, there's a number of things. Uh, first of all, you need to be able to set this up and monitor something effectively. So that means for the typical SMB, you guys don't have all day to play around with backup software and to, you know, to do the job of a professional IT administrator. So for the most part, it needs to be something that you can do easily, you can do quickly, you can do repeatably, uh, and uh, you can do it affordably. I mean, clearly... You have businesses to run as, SMB, as SMBs generally, and your primary operation is not necessarily running backup all the time. So these things need to be easy and, and simple to use, of which Backup Exec very assuredly is, uh, and it needs to be solid. It needs to be rock solid, and Backup Exec certainly offers that as well. Uh, and some of these, like I mentioned before, the enterprise features that have been kind of creeping down into the SMB are great value adds and allow you guys to optimize your IT protection strategy. Right. No backup strategy is good if you're not doing it in a repeatable way. You want to make sure that it's rock solid and the recovery is rock solid as well. Absolutely. I think a lot of folks think disk to disk to tape or disk based backup is more expensive than tape. What have you seen in recent years with developments around software and in the industry? Are more smaller organizations now using disk? What's the most popular? I, it's, it's been a gradual shift over the last five years or so. I think that uh, if you'd asked me the same question literally five years ago, I would have been able to tell you that uh, you know, 80% of backup exec customers used tape as their primary medium. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's, it's more like 60% of backup exec customers use disk as their primary medium. So there is definitely a, a huge shift going on in the industry today. Uh, disk is cheaper. Disk is faster. Disk is, allows you random access. So there is a lot of benefits to using disk as opposed to using tape. And especially like you mentioned before with the, the reliability aspects of, of RAID storage, the need to really put things to tape is, is, is shrinking rapidly. Yeah, I think a lot of folks like the 
faster backup and recovery that get with a disk. Myself, the recovery is great because you mentioned random access capabilities, but also just getting it back fast. You don't have to load the media. Uh, you don't have to position the media to get certain things. It uh, happens a lot more quickly on that primary copy to disk. And we'll talk a little bit more about a strategy of using tape because it doesn't go away. It's still there for archiving and compliance and off-site type capabilities, but from a backup strategy perspective, uh, deduplication is probably not the first thing you should think about, though it is an important part to put into your backup strategy to meet your needs. So break it down for us, Aiden. In simple terms, what is deduplication? I think dedupe would spell D-U-D-U-P, D-U-D-U-P-E, deduplication. It's a tongue twister. What does it mean in the context of a small medium business? Deduplication really is just an advanced form of compression is what it comes down to. So it's taking something that's uh, you know larger in size and shrinking it down to some usually, hopefully, much smaller numbers. Um, there's many different types of deduplication. There's what we call file level deduplication, which some of you may understand, may have heard as single instance storage, for instance. Uh, there's also what we call block level deduplication, which is what Backup Exec does, which is it takes a file and it breaks it down into some requisite pieces, usually you know, smaller chunks of the file and then make sure that it only stores one copy of each of those little pieces that it, that it broke the file down into. So it takes a file like you see on the picture here and eliminates the purple dots and the black dots and, and only stores one copy of each of those things. And I know that one of the top questions we'll cover it again later at the end is how much does it compress? I think people know that tape can compress about two to one when you're going to your backup media. Are you getting that? Are you getting a lot more than that? Some people say crazy numbers like 20 to one. What, what's more realistic from uh, a planning perspective? Unfortunately, there's no easy answer to that question. It really depends on the data type that you're backing up. For instance, if all you back up are Word documents or PowerPoint presentations or you know, Excel spreadsheets, you're going to see exceptionally high deduplication over time. Uh, if you're backing up more complicated things like, say, an Exchange database or a SQL server or a SQL database, uh, you'll see less. But we will absolutely see better compression than you would see with just your typical t uh, hardware compression or tape compression that you see today. So we'll, we'll get into that in a moment, but we can see anywhere between five times data reduction to 20x data reduction. Great. If we want to compare some approaches to deduplication, there's a, there are several ways you can go about doing it. I think some of the more popular uh, ways that people are reading about in industry magazines and such is using a dedicated deduplication appliance or a hardware-based deduplication solution. There's no doubt about it that data backup reduction is very good. It's also something that hasn't been uh, affordable for a lot of smaller organizations. Uh, can you talk to us about how you can contrast other approaches, specifically doing the dedupe at your media server, as well as uh, even considering doing it on some of the clients themselves from a backup perspective? Certainly. So Backup Exec 2010 and the deduplication options support three different methodologies for deduplication. Now, Mario mentioned the first one, which is this uh, deduplication appliance. So we can integrate with dedupe appliances and use the, use the power of those appliances to provide deduplication. But like also Mario was saying, if you don't want to or can't uh, afford those devices, which, is, by the way, is not uncommon, there are other ways that you can accomplish the, a, a reasonable level of deduplication, uh, in some cases an excellent level of deduplication, by using a software solution uh, powered by Backup Exec. So if you see here on, this, on the two left-hand columns of the table, we see what we call media server deduplication or client and source deduplication. Now that, that really indicates where the deduplication takes place. So if you imagine your media server as the kind of the brains of the, the backup operation here, uh, and if you imagine the clients as the remote servers that, say, are running Exchange or you're running your file server or you know your print server, for example, th those are the two locations we're talking about. So the media server deduplication, the data actually is deduplicated as it arrives on the media server just prior to it being stored to the backup device, in this case, Drobo. So the media server deduplication is purely for data reduction. I just want to shrink the amount of data that I have and optimize my storage that way. Now, client or source deduplication gives you an extra additional benefit here, which is it deduplicates the data at the source, i.e. on that remote system, that file server or that exchange server. It deduplicates the data at that file server, at that remote system, and then sends it across the wire to the media server and to eventually to the storage location uh, in its deduplicated form. So not only does it provide you with storage optimization in terms of compression with dedupe, 
It also offers you the ability to minimize the WAN or LAN bandwidth that you actually use uh, in the process of sending data over the network for backup. So at the end of the day, both of these types of deduplication will provide the same level of compression, the same level of dedupe. It just really matters where the dedupe takes place and, and whether or not you want to uh, reduce the amount of data you send over the network. So you mentioned the media server or the backup server where that stuff is uh, taking place. You're going to need that no matter what. We'll talk a little bit more about the architecture of how someone would put a solution together like this. But one of the key decision-making criteria would be whether or not the CPU where that software is running has uh, some extra capacity to do the deduplication processing. And from a, a media server perspective, because you mentioned it's happening at that backup server, the clients sending their data to the backup server don't have the impact of the dedupe. You can do it at the client, as you mentioned, you get that great benefit, but there are some limitations. You show here on the slide that uh, it's only available where you have Windows agents. Are there any other characteristics, uh, minimum system requirements, where you'd want to have a candidate be a good candidate for client or source dedupe? Uh, so yes, uh, pretty much any Windows client has the capability of doing good client or source deduplication. Uh, the system requirements for the client itself aren't all that high. It's typically a dual-core processor and, and one gigabyte of physical memory. So the requirements on that source machine aren't, aren't very high. It's, there are two, two reasons to, to do client deduplication, and, and primarily the first one, the, the largest one, is really to minimize the network bandwidth over the, over the wire. And secondly, if you have a scaled environment, if you do have a number of, of servers that you're backing up simultaneously, uh, you can see some performance improvements if you let the clients do the work of the heavy lifting of deduplication as opposed to having the media server do all the work. So as we go on here to the basic architecture, you need a media server no matter what, as we show here. Uh, and there are ways to do dupl duplication, showing you in a picture what you just described, how the client dedupe can minimize the amount of traffic going across uh, the network. And then on the media server side, the dedupe happens between the backup server and the storage. You, you need storage for your disk backup in this case, and there are lots of technologies out there, whether it be fiber channel or iSCSI, if you want to use a SAN. You could conceivably have direct attached storage to your backup server, depending on your environment. We're showing a shared storage environment here because a lot of folks are going to need that shared storage anyway for their virtual servers to uh, scale out other applications and have mobility uh, amongst their server pool. So if you uh, put a SAN together, for your VMware environment or your Citrix environment or your uh, Hyper-V environment, uh, you can use that for this disk-based backup, and it's already consolidated and ready there for you. If you haven't, you're looking at putting an architecture together, now's a great time to put a SAN because you can use it for the dedupe as well as uh, for your virtualization needs. And the deduplication software, uh, in the case of either media server-based or client-based, would exist on the server and the server and clients, respectively. I want to ask you a question, Aiden, about combining the approaches, because I think you'd agree most customers are going to use a little bit of both, and uh, help us understand where the right place is to use media server versus client source dedupe, and uh, how you combine the two. Sure. So there's a couple hard and fast rules here as far as when these things, when these different styles of deduplication can be used. Media server deduplication must, in the back of exec case, must be used when there is no ability for backup exec to put a remote agent on the remote system. So say, for example, you have a VMware server in your environment. If you use vSphere or, or VMware ESX 3.5, uh, media server deduplication would, would be required in that particular situation. Or if you're using, you're using, like you said, if you're using a SAN environment where uh, you have a kind of remote attached storage to your, to your media server, uh, media server deduplication is definitely going to be effective. Now, as far as client or source deduplication goes, now, I mentioned the WAN bandwidth uh, piece there. So if you do have remote offices, for instance, and uh, remote agents or back exec remote agents are at those remote offices and you're trying to centralize data to some central location, that's, that's clearly the ideal time to use uh, client or source deduplication. Yeah. Uh, and then the second thing, of course, that I meant, like I mentioned, is if you have some sort of scaled environment, if you're doing you know, five or 10 or 15 servers simultaneously, which would be a, a pretty large installation, you might want to use client deduplication as well. That, because that allows that offloads, like I said, the offloads the work of deduplication to those remote systems and lets, uh, lets more simultaneous backups occur. All right. For a lot of the folks looking to put deduplication in, they may have a small number of servers, two, three, four servers. A lot of folks who are talking to Drobo want 
information on how they can do some of these enterprise grade solutions on uh, an SMB budget. And uh, in the case of doing either of these, they're both relatively inexpensive. And we'll, we'll see as we put the configuration together, you can do it with just the media server license or you can uh, add some clients that you need anyway for backup added to those uh, and make it a part of the solution. In terms of leveraging the power of deduplication in backup, a lot of folks, Aiden, have some concerns because they want to make sure they're not putting any extra impact on their systems from a CPU or memory perspective. Uh, the reason they are in business is to have their servers running in tip-top shape, and they uh, typically want to go as thin as possible on the server itself. So you mentioned client dedupe. Uh, there, there might be a concern there. Cost is always uh, a concern, and then long-term scalability. While someone starts small, they may want to feel comfortable about growing large into the future. And the architecture we've talked about so far lends itself to really addressing all these concerns, doesn't it? Absolutely. Backup exec today can store up to 16 terabytes of deduplicated storage. So that what we call fully hydrated data that was fully uncompressed and, and restored to systems. You know, that can work out to anywhere between 50 and 100, you know, 50 and 200 terabytes of, of actual front end storage. So that's a pretty significant amount of data. Uh, for anybody. So the long-term scalability aspects of BE 2010 can be concerning, but shouldn't be a concern uh, for customers uh, who look to use the duplication solution. As far as cost goes, you'll see this, the cost comparison between, say, using a hardware solution and, and using a, a combination of Drobo and Symantec. Now, as far as uh, the impact on systems go, the, the remote agent systems that we've talked about in terms of client deduplication, the remote aspect piece of this, are relatively low. So like I mentioned, it was a dual-core CPU, uh, you know, one gigabyte of physical memory. These are all system requirements that have kind of been standardized you know, seven, eight, nine years ago as far as uh, you know, ordering a system from Dell goes. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the, the media server aspect of this, the brain of the operation, needs more CPU and memory requirements than, than does the remote agent piece. And we generally recommend that at least a dual-core or, or a quad-core system uh, with eight gigs of physical memory is available uh, for the media server. Now, that may seem high, but that's not really all that high. There's a relatively standard configuration from a Dell or an HP or a Lenovo, uh, anybody who sells servers these days, or even, even high-level desktops. And, and you can get those systems for relatively reasonable prices, at, like, like the slide mentions, 2200 bucks or less in some cases. So the, the systems that you get today will most likely be able to run back of exact 2010 and the deduplication option. Right, and from an appliance-based approach, the technology you'd be putting in place with Backup Exec 2010 and Drobo would lend itself to slipping an appliance in in the future if the environment really did scale up and grow. It's one of these things that you may not be able to afford up front, but starting at, down this path doesn't prevent you from going to that destination in the future, does it? That's absolutely correct. Yeah. All right. As we put it all together here, uh, I've got an uh, example here showing how you could deploy a deduplication solution with Drobo and Symantec Backup Exec. We've got a combination of some remote agents as well as Backup Exec 2010 media server with a dedupe suite running. Uh, you'll see that from a pricing perspective that for uh, under $3,000 you can get the deduplication suite, which as you've told me, Aiden, gives you the media server license and deduplication bundled together at a fairly significant savings, which is of benefit. To make sure that we're being on a fair and balanced uh, approach here, we're putting in the hardware cost of a backup server so you could get a proper backup server quad core with greater than eight gig of physical memory. As you put it all together with some storage for your disk to disk backup, your hardware and some agents, assuming you're going to want to do some VMware work and some Microsoft Exchange work, a relatively small environment here can get into a deduplicated backup strategy for about $13,000. And on the right-hand side, we show that doing the same thing with an entry-level uh, addition of a deduplication appliance is going to cost a little bit more, uh, about twice as much. So the uh, software-based will save you about 50% compared to the other. And for a lot of folks, that savings enables them to get into the solution versus waiting until they can save up and afford uh, the target solution they really want there in the end. And I think for a lot of folks, just making sure they're actually doing it in a reliable way is the most important piece. Do you see this as something that customers uh, are starting to do from a dedupe perspective, not just disk to disk, but dedupe for as few as three servers? Uh, yes, indeed. We've seen 
we've seen customers who have literally just one server, like a small business server with, from Microsoft, uh, be interested in deduplication. It really depends on how much data you have and how much uh, you want to store and how much you want to save on, on storage. Right. So with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about the certified solutions for SMBs based on the certification process with Symantec. Drobo Elite, our iSCSI SAN product, as well as Drobo Pro, our direct attach storage product for servers. Both of those are certified across uh, the basic backup to disk certification suites as well as the deduplication with backup exec. And you mentioned before, Aiden, that the install is fairly straightforward. And we at Drobo, we'd never recommend uh, a solution that wasn't drop dead easy to use because it's a really big part of our design center. Uh, you yourself, you can, you can probably give us some testaments as to customers installed and implemented this. You install the option, you define your dedupe locations, you target the backups, and the rest just happens by itself, right? That's exactly right. You can get it up and running in less than 20 minutes. All right. Well, it depends on how fast you click in terms of 20 minutes. But uh, one of those things that it shouldn't be scary for a small and medium business, I guess, no, is the point. No, not at all. Not at all. All right. So let's go to some of our top questions. I'll hit you uh, first with uh, how does deduplication affect the restoration process, Aiden? Because uh, certainly packing it onto the disk is helpful in saving cost. But is there any impact positively or negatively on restoration? Uh, restore is going to be a little bit slower than you would see if you were doing a typical undeduplicated backup. We do store the data in its deduplicated form on the Drobo device, so we do actually store it in these little you know, segments of files actually on the on the device itself. So we are recreating your the restorable file in the process of doing a restore. So the, the restore process is generally a little bit on the, a little bit slower. Now in terms of percentage, we're talking maybe you know, 20 to 25 percent slower than your typical recovery process would be through back exec. So not a huge reduction, but it, it will be slightly slower. But we think that since backups happen 95% of the time and restores happen 5% of the time, uh, it's, uh, it's important to optimize for the backup side of things rather than the recovery side, at least at this point. How about comparing it to tape? I mean, is a deduplicated coming off of disk still faster than a regular tape restore? Uh, it really depends on the amount of data at this point in time. So mm -hmm. if you are looking to recover a single file, Hands down, any form of disk-based backup will recover faster than a tape. There's just no question about that. If you're looking to recover very large amounts of data, you know, multiple terabytes of data, for instance, uh, you know, maybe the contents of an entire tape, then certainly uh, tape-based recovery could theoretically be faster than recovery of a deduplicated backup set. Um, so it really depends on the thing that you're recovering and the amount of data that you're recovering and, and the size of data that you're recovering. Got it. Are the backups faster? And I think you can say that when you're using deduplication on the client, the backup happens faster, correct? Backups can certainly fa happen faster, absolutely, especially if you get into the scaled environments. Uh, when you use client deduplication, you have you know, more than a few systems backing up simultaneously. So backups certainly can be faster than what you would expect the typical LAN backup to be today or a typical over-the-wire backup to be today, especially in the case of an incremental or differential type backup. All right, a question here about the recovery time objective, RTO. For folks that are doing disk-based backup, you can get a, a fairly good restore because you can get at it fairly quickly, but uh, it's not necessarily a DR solution. There's no automated failover to that copy. The copy is made, the backup archive is made in some sort of backup form. Uh, when a customer is trying to contrast true DR with backup, what, do you, what are your normal recommendations? So we, we have a number of solutions today within Symantec to solve the DR problem, and, and actually in, in future releases of Backup Exec, you'll see additional integration on here. So we have two, two methodologies today that work with Backup Exec. First of all, we have the integrated disaster recovery process that actually is part of Backup Exec and is, is, comes at no cost with Backup Exec today. That allows you to do bare metal recovery from, a, from existing backup copies. And, and like you say, Mario, the backups that we do are in a specific format such that they're not necessarily instantly retrievable or instantly recoverable to a, to a full system. We have to be in the middle to actually kind of decipher these, these backup formats and actually put them back onto the, onto the media. So there's also a separate product or a standalone product that we call Backup Exec System Recovery, which is a kind of one of our sister products within the Backup Exec family that allows you to do fast disaster recovery. And that product is pretty specifically made just for bare metal disaster recovery. To achieve a, a, you know, a bulletproof, you know, soup to nuts kind of implementation of DR and backup, 
Uh, today, we'll actually need two products, the back of the exact piece and the back of the exact system recovery piece. Uh, in the future, we plan to, to put that down to just the one piece. A clarifying question here about deduplication. Uh, it's something in the case of backup exec that's built in as an option for backup exec. You can't have deduplication without having backup exec, correct? That's true. The way we, the way we sell it today is we have what we call a backup exec media server, and that's the like I mentioned, the brains of the product before. And then you could add different pieces and parts on top of that. And the backup exec deduplication option is one of those pieces of parts that you can add to it. So let's just hypothetically say you have one server and you want to back up that one server and you want to use deduplication on that one box. You would need to purchase a backup exec media server and the backup exec deduplication option. Or like we mentioned before, the deduplication suite, which combines those two pieces for a significantly reduced price. Right, and uh, that price from a... Uh, budgeting perspective is probably lower than a lot of people might expect for getting into that sort of solution. And just a quick commercial for Backup Exec 2010, it's likely the most prolific product for SMB backup and recovery that uh, exists in the marketplace. And you yourself, you've been working in various capacities. You mentioned companies you came from. This technology has been around for a long, long time as a solution specifically for small and medium business, correct, Aiden? That's absolutely true. I've been with... Uh five or six different companies prior to, you know, Symantec purchasing the, the, the company that I, was, that I was currently with. And uh, all of the companies that I work for have been looking to reduce the storage costs of data uh, over time for at least the last decade. Uh, so started off with single instance storage and then moved into, you know, file level deduplication and then block level deduplication. So we're seeing, a, we're definitely seeing a trend towards you know, the kind of controlling the data explosion that we see today. I mean, when was the last time you really deleted a lot of things from your hard disk, right? The, <laughs> the things, things tend to sit there and sit around for a while, and, and, and you know, storage costs continue to grow. Well, uh, here at Drobo, we like to say storage costs continue to drop because we can allow you to mix and match any drives you want, buy larger drives uh, as the prices get lower, and insert those into your Drobo product and expand your storage without having to configure anything and uh, really uh, expand infinitely over time. We'll take a couple more questions, Aiden. We're in the bonus time now, folks. A question about where the deduplication database is stored. Is there a database for this deduplication, how you're keeping track of the repeated elements, and where is that stored in the case of client and server dedu? Uh, it's generally stored in the same place that the files are actually stored. So if you the, 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 the deduplication setup location that you that you created as part of the, the back of exact configuration process, uh, the da database is stored there. It's actually a Postgres SQL database, uh, and and for those for those who know, you act, the deduplication is the combination of two things. It's this database that controls you know how these chunks and how these pieces are stored and combined, and then the actual file storage itself that actually contains the little bits and pieces of the files that we store. Another question about the media server. Does that have to be a physical machine? We talked about its properties being quad core and eight gig of memory or higher. Can that be a VM if there's sufficient resources to give that virtual machine those same resources? Absolutely. There's no backup exec can run as a virtual machine or in a virtual virtual guest uh, as well as it can as a physical machine. So there, it really comes down to whether or not, uh, you know, in some virtualization solutions, for instance, uh, you can't do uh, SCSI pass-through. So there are some, maybe some technical limitations to that would might not work for your specific environment. But for the most part, backup exec should, and, and a Drobo device should work just fine in a virtual environment. Fantastic. A question uh, for Drobo here about deduplication in the storage and having Drobo do that directly because the block level inside the Drobo device could result in it being faster and more efficient uh, in a a uh, file server, a VMware, VMFS environment. And uh, to let folks know, uh, Drobo is considering lots of new technologies to integrate with our products. But one of the reasons why we uh, are partnered with uh, Symantec specifically is that we're allowed to focus on the most affordable, absolutely easiest to use storage devices that allow you to mix and match storage and uh, disks and do the storage that you need for an iSCSI SAN at an ultra affordable price, normally a fraction of what it might cost for other types of storage. And typically the, the storage that offers deduplication inherently in the storage is something that's more enterprise grade and the processing capabilities and the, the technology embedded in that to do that work typically uh, means more hardware and technology is packed in and a higher cost. And uh, Drobo's Existence is to provide the best storage experience ever. 
And uh, for small and medium business customers, we feel the best entry point for doing deduplication is with a software-based approach. Uh, in the examples here, Symantec Backup Exec 2010, doing that on your client and your backup server for the most affordable uh, solution possible. Another question for you, Aiden, is does Backup Exec's algorithms handle images and video? So can you handle deduping videos embedded in videos for better compression ratios? Uh, certainly. Uh, anything that can be stored to a Windows file system, uh, AVIs or MPEGs or anything like that, can be stored. Now, when you talk about compressed data like MPEGs and such, you probably will get slightly less reduction, data reduction, than you would with, uh, say, your typical you know, Word files or Excel files, etc. Uh, so your deduplication ratio wouldn't be 20x, that's for certain in those particular cases. But certainly... Anything that can be backed up and split into chunks um, by the deduplication option can certainly be uh, a target for dedupe. Thanks. Question about Drobo ProFS, a new product that was recently released here at Drobo. Uh, is it certified? It is currently not yet certified. It's something that we're looking at doing. And if uh, you have some interest, certainly let your Drobo sales uh, representative or your preferred partner that you buy Drobo from, let them know that you'd like to see that product specifically certified. In the case here of a question about SAN versus file storage, uh, backup exec could back those copies up to either a SAN or direct attached storage, or it could go to a file server, right, Aiden? Absolutely. I mean, it could. there's really no uh, limitation on, on backup exec's ability to put data to a specific location. So it could be a uh, like you say, it could be a specific file server, it could be a Drobo device, it could be any any NTFS or NTFS-like storage device at the back end. And are there performance characteristics that make, you know, SAN or direct attached storage better than file storage? Uh, not particularly. Uh, in our in our testing, we found that uh, they all, especially over a gigabit network uh, and in, in an SMB-like environment, we, we certainly don't see much of a, there's no real limitations to either uh, occasionally, direct access can be faster, um, but that's that's not something that we see all the time. So. Okay. Well, it, for for the, some of the lower end file sharing devices that exist in the marketplace, they're not known for performance like uh, larger NetApp or EMC systems for right. uh, for file sharing. So, in a lot of cases, the iSCSI SAN or Direct Attach can provide better support there and, and uh, potentially less complicated if you're using that as a storage pool anyway for some of your other applications. One of the questions here about uh, another one about Drobo is 7200 RPM drives. Do you need to use those in order to take advantage of deduplication technology with Symantec? And the answer is no. You can mix and match any drives that you want. For a lot of backup use cases, customers prefer to use the less expensive green dri type drives, 5400 RPM drives, which will give you the uh, streaming performance that you'd need in order to have a good backup solution while uh, saving you a little bit on the cost. If you're using that same SAN, however, for VMware, for other applications in the environment, naturally having all 7200 RPM drives would benefit the people using it as primary disk, and you'd have it there for a little bit better performance on the backup side. But if it's exclusive for backup, you probably don't need that. We're going to go to one last question. Is there a deduplication... Uh, solution for mixed environments. So Windows server that might also have some Mac or XServe server in there. Do you, do you get a lot of folks asking for support for Mac, Aiden? Uh, actually, we do. Uh, we, we have, we have a, what we call a remote agent for Macintosh today, uh, which, which allows a remote agent or allows backup exec to be installed on a remote Mac system. We don't have anything that allows a Mac system to be the media server piece today. Uh, but we do allow uh, Mac OS 10.6 and 10.5 uh, remote agents to be installed, and so you can back up data from those XServe boxes to your, to your Windows server. Well, we're way into the bonus time, Aiden, and I'm going to quickly uh, wrap us up here with some key takeaways. Deduplication is exclusively for enterprise? Not anymore, because SMBs can also minimize their backup windows and reduce storage costs with dedupe. And you talked a lot about uh, Backup Exec 2010. It's new this year. The product, Backup Exec, is not new, but the deduplication suite is new, and it provides an easy-to-use solution that protects more uh, and stores less, thus saving money for small and medium businesses. And it's a certified solution uh, with uh, Symantec and Drobo together. And we've given you uh, a little recipe on how you can put that solution together yourself uh, at a cost that's probably more affordable than you might think. 
Yeah, I really appreciate you taking some time today, Aiden. So thank you for your guest expertise and a little plug for anybody who wants to do a free trial of Backup Exec. You can do it for 60 days at the URL there. I appreciate your help, Aiden. Absolutely, Mario. It's been a, been a pleasure. All right. Thanks, everybody else, for joining today. If you want to send us an email at tv at drobo.com, we'd be happy to answer any additional questions or send us a tweet uh, on Twitter at Drobo. More information on today's topic is going to be posted later today at drobo.tv, a full replay of uh, today's information along with the full Q&A that you can uh, access there. And with that, I'll go ahead and bid everyone a good day and happy sharing.